Johansson Ellis and you are so welcome to my studio in Spain. Cascada Studio is located in Mijas about 30 minutes from Malaga and I give printmaking courses here and you are of course so welcome to come and join me. Today I'm going to show you in a film how you make a traditional etching. Not only am I going to show you a traditional line etching but I am going to develop that etching a little bit. I'm going to add soft ground to it and I'm also going to add aqua tint. I've parted the film up in three parts so it will be easy and simple to watch and you can take whatever you need from each film. I have an idea for my etching, always a good idea, and I'm using a couple of drawings that I've done before I've developed them to an etching that I think is going to work for the different methods that we're going to use. I'm going to do the girl with a little frog on her arm as a very simple line etching. I'm only going to deal with the outline when I do the line etching. And in the second film I'm going to add a feather to her hat with soft ground. And in the last film I'm going to add all the shading and from my lightest greys to my darkest darks in aqua tint. I use industrial copper, of course you can buy pre-cut pre plates in, in any art shops that deal with printmaking supplies. I find that it's quite expensive because it's very often quite thick and copper doesn't really need to be more than 1.65 millimeters for you to be able to use it. Makes it quite a bit more inexpensive. Let's go outside in my uh, dirty area, so to, so to speak, where I deal with preparing the plates and using the acid. And we'll cut the plate to size and I'll show you how to prepare a copper plate for etching. So here we are in my outside area. Uh, I'm kind of lucky because I'm, I'm able to have an area where I have a nice work surface and I have access to water, which is great when you're doing printmaking as a lot of it is quite messy. I'm going to take my drawing, I'm going to put it onto my copper plate so I get a bit of a measure on the size of the plate that I want and I'm just going to draw it up with a straight ruler. Now, my cutter is not very big, but that's not necessary. You do get used to cutting with a smaller cutter and just feeding it through. The advantage with having your own cutter is that you can actually do your drawing. Then you go and you find your piece of copper and you cut your copper to fit your drawing. You don't draw to fit the copper. There we go. Still a little bit too big, so I'm going to cut a bit of the top as well. We're very smartly going to move on to talking about backing the plate. Copper is quite expensive, so in case things doesn't work out the way you'd plan them to, you want to make sure that you have a piece of plastic on the back of your plate. This is just that kind of cheap thing that you put in drawers, and it's very handy, preserves the back of your plate. Okay, 
Now we are going to clean the plates. When in printmaking you talk about cleaning the plate, what you're really saying is that we're going to degrease the plate. We always have grease in our fingers. Everything in our surrounding has a certain amount of grease. And the ground, that is the varnish, that we put on the plate to do our drawing in will not stay on when you put it in the acid if there is the slightest bit of grease on the plate. I have a sponge, I have a bit of water. To clean the plate, to degrease the plate, I use pumice powder. Now this is, as the name says, <laughs> is powder made from pumice stone. It is used for French polishing, so you should be able to get that in any good art supply stockist. I dip my sponge, my wet sponge, in a bit of the pumice powder, and I start in a circular movement to clean off my plate. The advantage, I think, with pumice powder is that not only does it degrease the plate, but it also polishes it up a little bit. On copper plates, there is usually a little bit of discoloration. There might be some very, very fine scratches. And the pumice powder removes, to a certain extent, all of that. And you have a nice, clean surface. Pay special attention to the edges and it's a good idea to wear a pair of uh, PVC or rubber gloves when cleaning the plate so you don't leave any fingerprints. Now the important bit here is now we're going to wash the plate. The way you see that the plate is completely clean is because you will have an unbroken surface of water. If the water breaks up anywhere on the plate it means that you still have grease. You go back and you clean the plate a bit more. The surface of water has to be unbroken. Okay. When you wash the plate off, it's a great idea to leave it standing on a corner to dry so the water runs off in a nice... I mean, you can, you, we're going to help it along with a, with a clean cloth here. But that's a good idea. So your plate is dry. I've given it a little bit of a hand with a very, very clean cloth made sure that it is completely dry and free of the pumice powder as well. And I'm now going to go on to put on the ground. Hard ground, I use Charbonnel's Ultraflex because I really like that ground. There are alternatives to it today. There are acrylic etch ground and there are several other things that are much less toxic than hard ground. So I guess that makes me a traditionalist because I still prefer the ground. Uh, it's a personal choice and I think that everybody should definitely be exploring all the avenues and see what fits you the best. I always transfer the ground over into a, a different jar so I don't make a, a big mess out of my, my ground container. I have a nice soft brush. This is liquid ground and I'm now going to brush it on in a nice even manner. Don't be too slow, especially not when the temperatures are a little bit warmer because the ground actually dries very fast. So I kind of slop it on a little bit and then I pull my brush very carefully back and forth, spreading it out so it is really, really even. Now you see it kind of gathers at the bottom edge. Don't worry too much about that because you're not really going to bring your drawing right up to the edge as you will eventually bevel that edge for, for printing. So it doesn't matter so much. It's going to look like a copper penny in color and it has to be nice and even. If you make, if you brush it on and it's very blobby, so some bits are, have a lot of ground and other bits have very little ground, then your drawing is going to end up having different forms of line. 
We're done with the grounding of the plate. Clean up the edges of the jar that you keep the ground in or you'll never get the lid off again. And I'm going to wait for that to dry before I put my drawing on. Take a break from life. Won't you come and spend some time?